Whether you live in Israel, whether you live in America, no matter where you live, I think that uh, simply identifying as a Jew, Israel becomes a part of the cultural vocabulary. Although I didn't go to Israel as a young child, I was very much aware of its existence and that it was a front line for democracy. I think as a, an observant Jew, I feel very connected to Israel. Uh, to the land, to the people, to the concept of a, a nation that's a refuge for Jews all over the world. Every opportunity that I have, I'm telling people the, the whole story from the beginning because I lived it. I lived it. I lived under British mandate. With that connection through that memory in your DNA, there is this connection that we came from there. For Jews that I know, at least, I would like to say all Jews, uh, Israel is part of our identity, so it's a part of us. And what goes on in Israel is uh, of concern for all of us. I see things in terms of black and white, right? I don't know if that's from photography or not, but um, if it came down to a fight between two sides, Israel on one side and whoever on the other side, of course I'm going to stand with Israel. I have very positive feelings, extremely positive, and I try to communicate that as much as possible in every group that I'm part of or in any kind of public interview I might have. I was an uh, a art major at UCLA. Um, I was a, a printmaker and painter and did figure drawing. I also spent uh, one summer at Betzalel uh, with figure painting and um, printmaking. That was in 1972. That was my first time in Israel with a group of uh, students my age through a federation program. And um, it was, and I have family there, so it was my first visit to a lot of my family. Israel and Judaism was just who I was um, growing up and to this very day. Driving from Tel Aviv where we, we got off the plane that we met and they sent us in different directions. We're driving through this almost dry wilderness and all of a sudden we come upon the kibbutz. You drive through the gates, it was like paradise with birds in the trees and everything was green. And we were right on the border of Jordan. And you'd look over in Jordan and it was dry and arid. And, and this was like, it was the miracle of, of what Israel was about. I felt connected to Israel in that way that you hear people you know, in books and movies say, oh, it was like going home. Uh, it really was. It was partially the idea that everyone around me for the first time in my life had similar ideas about theology and about God and about our origins as a people. In one way, there's a selfish part of it, right? We were raised in the United States to figure that this was the only place that we could go next. And I think that that's an important ideal. It's not, it's, it's selfish in a way, but it's also a way of propagating a homeland. Previous generations that I know look to Israel as um, a secure place, a, a shelter. Um, and I don't know that it is uh, different, but I do know that my uh, my experience and people of my generation's experience has been uh, a cultural experience with Israel. My mother's activities, particularly in Ort, took her to Israel. And um, I can remember how enormously upset she was when Iran closed down the Ort schools and uh, she was devastated. I think it's incredibly important and imperative that Jews stick together especially right now. Um, do I think that needs to be founded in exclusivity? No. Growing up, I had a, honestly, like a kind of negative feeling about Israel because it was something that we were indoctrinated with. And what I saw is I would see my cousins go off and they'd go on a kibbutz and then, and then come back Hasidic and maybe that's not a big example, but that's what I was seeing through a child's eyes. I really bought, I bought into the romance of that whole myth of the Jews going to Palestine and making the empty desert bloom and 
um, that, that quote that was attributed to Golda Meir about um, a land with no people for a people with no land. And I, I believed that growing up, that there was nobody there. We didn't really talk about Israel in my home at all. Growing up, my, my, it was, Israel was so important to my grandparents that naturally, you know, there, there is something special in that in me. However, being from West Los Angeles and, and growing up the generation I did, my Judaism wasn't threatened. So I never felt that need to have this refuge. So that connection to, to that sacred land where we were safe, I was very privileged not, not to have to feel that because I felt relatively safe in, in my community here. I didn't realize that Jewish was something different as an identity till I moved to Las Vegas and then at 13 found out what anti-Semitism was. And it was interesting. I learned to, to adjust socially, culturally, mannerisms, way of talking. Years later, I moved to New York, I meet a man from Israel, and I now have a Jewish last name. And people assume I'm Jewish as soon as they meet me. So there is a freedom with that, and sometimes a fear. When I went to art school, it was fine. I uh, one day had lunch with one of the three you know, women there, and we got to talk, and I told her I was Jewish. And she said, you can't be, you don't have horns. And I thought, well, that's the last time I give out my Jewish identity. It's completely ridicu ridiculous. And I think that's when I started becoming more aware. Now, in 2019, the world's not feeling as safe. And I feel, especially as a Jew, we're more threatened than we have been in a very long time. I would like to think that we wouldn't have to run somewhere and isolate ourselves like we have had in the past. I'd like to think that we've, we've come further than that. I had an Israeli roommate, and I learned about this concept about chutz la'aretz. If it's outside of Israel, it, we don't want to know about it. And I understood the divisiveness of this concept and how that would only provoke greater enmity than which I knew uh, the purpose of it was to concentrate all the ideology, the, the security, the forward-looking ideas inside this tiny country, and that was very important. But I think there are other ways to provide this kind of ideology. The first thing I look for in the newspaper is a story about Israel. And uh, I'm always concerned with what I see and whether it fits together with my own ideology. And these days, I don't find it so. I am very concerned with the division and the machloket within the American Jewry. I think American Jews have an obligation, just as they do for this country, um, to speak out about problems that they see both here and in Israel. Um, it saddens me greatly um, to uh, hear American Jews become antagonistic towards Israel. I feel very strongly that this is the Jewish homeland. Um, and what's going on in politics now, some of the things I disagree with and some of the things I do agree with. I feel that we have to be strong. We need to have uh, a strong defense system because we are surrounded by, uh, by hostile neighbors that have been brainwashed to believe that we don't belong there. Whereas we as Jews have been there longer than perhaps any other faith. I think most American Jews feel a very strong connection to Israel, um, whether they're left, right, religious, or irreligious. I think that connection is still there. I have a bias because I live in a Haredi community. I live in an Orthodox community, which is very, very devoted to Israel. Um, very, maybe they don't agree with some of the politics, but there's definitely a, a, a strong connection with the country. The rise of the right 
um, makes me feel less and less uh, attached, less and le more and more alienated as a woman, as a, if I'm any kind of Jew, I'm a reformed Jew. So I feel like I would not be particularly welcome in that society. And whatever um, mythology I lived with as a kid growing up about Israel being a, a place of refuge for me, I don't think I could fit in there. So I don't know that I would ever want to go there. Personally, I feel like any allegiance to any particular side right now is quite complicated, whether it be in America or in Israel or anywhere else in our world. Um, this extreme sense of nationalism isn't, isn't something I'm comfortable with. Um, so if, if that means being um, extremely devout to Israel, I wouldn't display that personally right now. I think Jews throughout the world, not just Jews in America and Jews in Israel, I think we have a tie to each other. I think we have to be conscious um, of our responsibility for each other. I don't want to make decisions for Israel. I don't live there. I don't want Israel to make decisions for me. It doesn't live here. But I do believe in the support back and forth of all Jews for each other and for Israel. I'm a liberal, but liberal Americans don't understand the history. Liberals, period, but liberal Jews even that I've grown up with, that I know, they don't understand the history of Israel at all. And they're only making all decisions on this moment in time. When I'm with sometimes people who are more religious or more practicing their Judaism, I feel like a non-Jew. And that is very disturbing. So that's where, and I get caught between. But when I'm in Israel, I never feel that, never. And there's something beautiful about Israel and being Jewish in Israel. I envision uh, that uh, Israel will always be there. And my feeling is that by encouraging greater compassion uh, for all, that this will be possible rather than this very heavy-handed uh, political punishment that is being given to Palestinians. I believe strongly that Israel has a right to exist. And also, that doesn't mean that I think Israel gets to do whatever it wants. And I think, personally, I feel the same as an American. I believe that I am a deeply patriotic American. I was raised in the South. Kind of, you know, you're like raised being patriotic down there. And also, I don't think everything my country does is okay. I feel very strongly that Israel is um, our homeland and our haven. And I don't presume to um, tell the Israelis or tell Americans what, um, what the challenges are and the solutions are to their problems. I don't live in Israel, so I don't know all, you know, everything that's going on. I don't know what people are experiencing and what their life is like, except for what I hear on the news. If we saw in the U.S. what Israeli painters are painting, um, and vice versa, and saying, ah, there's, there's this language that artists have that we speak to one another, to the world, it, it would be wonderful if those two married up and had a uh, connection. It's important to me that I return to Israel because I will be followed by many, many American Jews that will find and see the wisdom in joining their brethren rather than living in the diaspora and go back to Israel. We need to do a better job as American Jews of helping to guide the next generation so that they can understand that there's a space in which they can be critical without having to walk away.